Lekker man, lekker hier so ons op het donderdag ochtend. Welcome to it. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Um, after watching the movie Interstellar, I had a weird question that swirled around my mind. If somebody offered you a one-way ticket on a spaceship that would travel at the speed of light out into the <laughs> cosmos, for you to go where no human being has ever gone before, would you take that ticket, Ilana? No, I, I can't say that I can because you can never come back. <laughs> yeah, but like, you, you have a vested you would, interest in, yeah. in what's going on. Like, what, if, what if you discovered a, a, a foreign race, an alien race that would educate you and tell you about the meaning of life and you could actually find or the that, answers no, to every Or that zero-g no, equa equation that saves, saves guys, the world from cancer. You, you just don't know what no, you're going to discover. the meaning of life is here. That's why we've <laughs> been designed to live here. And then you go so far out <laughs> that you're actually <laughs> able yeah. to come back because you get into a black hole that bends you back in the space-time continuum. And you lose and then 50 years of your guys, life then, yeah? But you're back. You, but, you then, are scaring me. The, I'm serious. The Bible <laughs> warned us about these times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But this, is, but this is the, the point that we've arrived at. And you hit the nail on the head that the fact that people are going to be going to Mars to live indefinitely is something that I think really shocks most of us. We can understand this leap of faith, we can understand the technology and the spend that's involved, but the idea of letting go, and it raises this in interesting question, are they letting go or are they sacrificing to take the human race the next step further? Like I think about it this way, like it was like for my mom when I had to leave accounting and decide to, <laughs> to go into this. Like she was a non-believer of this. Nah. It was the most foreign thing to her. Sorry to be putting you out like But this you're mom. a triple threat. But no, no not yeah. even that. But at some point she just had to believe in something possibly greater yeah, and give faith. me the opportunity. Faith. faith. Have faith in that. And then boom, it you know, it, it happened. Oh, well so it's, it's all conjecture at this stage because no one has actually done it before. So what these people will find when they arrive on Mars, how they are gonna actually live and you know coexist with each other and yeah. in this environment that is not suited for humans, that's what yeah. we need to simulate. And they found a very novel way of doing exactly that. They found one of the most inhospitable places on Earth, a volcano in Hawaii. And this is where they are running a very, very interesting simulation. For generations, the human race has had a particular fascination with the planet Mars. Not only have we landed robots on its surface to explore what makes it tick, but one company is still planning to send 12 brave volunteers to live there in the year 2027 for a worldwide reality TV show, never to return home to Earth. So if they ever make it, what would life on Mars really be like? While at minus 125 degrees Celsius, it's a tad cold and not a particularly inviting place for those who enjoy breathing. So for anyone living there, one mistake and you're in a world of trouble. That's where NASA comes in. In order to prepare people for life on Mars, they've been deploying future astronauts to live on an isolated area on the slopes of an arid volcano top in Hawaii to simulate life on the rocky surface. And while this isn't the first experiment, their fourth new adventure, which started this week, is the boldest mission to date, involving six scientists who will live in complete isolation for an entire year. So what does real isolation look like? The entire experiment is designed to simulate long-distance space travel, so crew members have to stay inside the 36 by 20 foot dome at all times, meaning it will be cramped. Privacy will be almost null. To breathe, they will use recycled air and harness energy from the sun. Nothing gets in or out of the dome, so they have all their supplies for the entire year in this tiny space. When it comes to grub, they can only live off rations of food that they've stored, so dinner is generally canned, although there is a small greenhouse for fresh veggies. If they want to stretch their legs a little and get away from the crowd, they can go outside for short bursts of time, but they have to put on a spacesuit. The mission itself is not just a physical test, but also a psychological analysis, aimed at determining the social and emotional ups and downs of being trapped in a small space with other people. As the mammoth journey begins, no doubt some tempers will flare. But in the end, this experiment and others like it will be an essential step on the road to our eventual arrival and survival on Mars.